if you're dieting down hard consistently, then every so often it is going to be good for you to kind of have a big day of eating just to sort of, I mean, in a bro sciencey way, keep your metabolism up because your body is going to adapt to whatever you give it to. You know, we're talking 10 shadows Maharaga. So if you're eating in a crazy deficit or even a moderate deficit, your body's going to reach equilibrium where that deficit is going to become your new maintenance. You know, because you're going to, your, your heart rate's going to slow down as you get leaner. You're just going to expend less energy because your body is, I mean, in basic terms, your body's saying, holy crap, fucking nutrients are rare to come by right now. We better slow down our processes so that we can conserve energy and, you know, not die. You know, that's kind of the evolutionary logic there. So if that's the case, you may not want to just continue to crash your calories Every maybe couple of weeks, if you have a big kind of refeed day, that might kind of spike your metabolism again. Your body's saying, oh shit, we got a ton of food. Let's burn through this shit. You know, let's use it for energy. And then, you know, that's kind of the refeed logic. Uh, but fuck, what was I even saying before I got to that? I bet I'm low on carbs right now. That's why I'm kind of having, that's why I'm having this brain fog. As long as in the whole day, I only hit 2,800, maybe I hit 3,000, you know, maybe I have kind of a light day, I only did 2,300. I'm in a deficit. You know, I'm burning fat. And if for the next week I had 3,500 calories, no matter how hard I think I'm dieting, if I'm still eating 3,500, which I would assume is a little bit closer to my maintenance. So if I'm eating that 3,500, which is my maintenance, even if it feels like I'm fucking starving, if that's my maintenance calories, I'm not going to get lean. You know, so I was kind of trying to highlight the importance of tracking all your shit, because if you don't, then, I mean, for one thing, you don't even know what's going on. Maybe you stop at McDonald's or something and you get like, oh, I only had three single cheeseburgers. That can't be that many calories. Dude, a single cheeseburger from McDonald's is 300 fucking calories. And if you have three of them, that's like a thousand calories. For some, if you're a lighter lifter dieting down, or let's say you're like a 160 pound dude lean, but you've got like an extra 50 pounds of body fat, so you're trying to trim down with that. Three, three single cheeseburgers could be half of your fucking calorie intake, you know? So a lot of times calories sneak up on you. Even just a little dollop of some buffalo hot sauce, that could be 20 grams of fat. You look at their nutrition label, okay, 32 grams per serving, 20 grams of fat each, whoa, whoa. Where did that come from? That's 200 calories right there in condiments, you know? So this is the kind of shit where those little details like that, if you're not tracking them, then it's gonna reflect in your results. If you've never done it, it does kind of suck in the beginning, you know, because if you're dieting, or if you're trying to start dieting, it sounds like a total chore to weigh out how much mayonnaise you scooped out of the jar when you're making a turkey sandwich, and to weigh out how much butter you're spreading into the pan when you fry your eggs, you know, and you're, you gotta look up the fucking macros and eight ounces of a top round steak. Like, you really do need to track it all. But once you do that, and you can manage to stay under your limits or hit your specific calorie goals for, you know, your daily intake, you're gonna notice changes. I promise, you know, I'm serious. If you think you're bulking, if you think that you're eating enough to be bulking, but you're not really gaining any weight, then I know what the problem is. The problem is you're not eating enough calories. And I know, I've, I feel like this is one of my top uh, subjects that I talk about. You know, I'm just cardio, eating enough food, and training hard. Those are probably my big three. But the reason I talk about them so much is because it can literally change the trajectory of your lifting and your progress by a fucking massive degree if you can get these things in order, you know? So let's say you have a massive breakfast. A massive breakfast for you. You know, let's say you have a 1,200 calorie breakfast. That's a, that's a big meal. That's a hearty meal, man. That's like, um, I don't know if I can describe a 1,200 calorie breakfast to put yourself on top of my head. You know, maybe seven, six whole eggs scrambled, bowl of cereal, a little bit of toast and some butter on it. Uh, maybe a big bowl of cereal. But yeah, that, something like that. A big breakfast. Yeah, that could be 1,200 calories right there. And that's a really good start. Little side note, if you're bulking up, 
the bigger of a breakfast you can have, the better. Because it's going to make the rest of your day, I mean, you're kind of starting your day off with a head start calorie-wise. If you can get 1,200 calories down, you know, an hour after you're awake, that's a good chunk of your calories in. But if you have a big breakfast, you could feel really f full. And then, you know, you don't eat till lunch. And you might say, oh, I had a big breakfast. I can maybe have a, I can just have a normal lunch. And that, the lunch can only be 500 or maybe 700 calories. So, you know, it's midday now. You've had 2,000. Let's say you come home. You say, oh, well, I'm about to go work out. I probably shouldn't have a big meal. You know, you, you take your pre-workout and go. You come back. You chat it with your buddies for a while. It's now 6 o'clock. Okay, I'm, I'm hungry again. You go to Chipotle. You get a 1,000-calorie bowl. That's 3,000 calories. And you're like, you know, maybe you have some leftovers. You bring it home. You finish them off. And then you end up going to sleep. Like 3,000 calories. Um, if you're a beginner, that's going to be enough. But, you know, and that's just an example. That could, I maybe overestimated a little. But what I'm trying to say is it can, that could be what feels like a lot of food. If your maintenance is maybe 3,200 you know, if you're already like a 180 pounder and you're lifting hard, 3,200, that's not going to do it for you. You know, you can, if you're just trying to main gain for a while and you are making steady month to month gains, then you're good, but it's not enough. And, and that's a good day. Let's say you have one shit day of eating where you only get like 2000 calories in because you were really busy or you had a lot of school stuff or uh, you had to work late or insert any fucking real life shit. Then, even if you're like, oh, I'll have a big, I'll have a big dinner. It's just, it's not going to work, man. You know? And this would, would this not make sense? The more consistent you are with something, the easier it's going to be to maintain. Right? What I'm trying to say is there's no likely chance that if you're not tracking your shit, you're going to hit your 4,000 calorie goal per day. And I'm not, I haven't even brought up the fact that I think the majority of anybody lifting thinks that they're eating way more calories than they really are. That is the only thing that I ever hear. You know, dude, I'm eating 7,000 calories a day, but I'm not growing. Uh, yeah. So you're 160 pounds, you're eating 7,000 calories a day, and you're not growing. Where's the lie? Two truths and a lie. You know, I've heard this so much. Dude, I'm, I'm one, I can't break past 170. I eat 7,000 calories a day. I'm not growing. Which one of these do you think is not true? Oh, bingo. No chance you're eating 7,000 calories, you know? So, I would recommend, if you've lifted for two years plus, or if you're a really skinny dude, those are kind of the two main situations then if you want to do a proper bulk for one thing maybe talk to your buddies who lift and ask them about you know their macros and their meal styles whatever else but if i were to kind of break it down in like as simple of a way as i can however many pounds you weigh is how many grams of protein you should eat maybe divide that by i don't know three ish and that's a solid fat intake maybe only divide it by like my two, uh, just just guesstimating, like that's what I do. You know, I'm like 250. I eat about 250 grams of protein a day, and when I'm bulking, I probably eat around 125, 150 grams of fat a day. So you know, around there, that's probably fine. This isn't a specific number, but that's just kind of a guess. And then, if you could do double your carbs per day, you should see a little something. Now, you know, this, that's kind of an arbitrary rule of thumb. That's not a that's not a real calorie recommendation, but. If you can make sure that every day you hit your 3,500 calorie intake or your 4,000 calorie intake, or if you're a much lighter guy, you know, maybe you, for you getting to 2,500 is pretty rough. However many calories you need to eat per day to see the scale change on a week to week basis, you know, day by day, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna fucking fluctuate. You might have a little more water. You might be a little more dehydrated. It's, your day by day weight fluctuation means nothing. Now your week to week weight fluctuation, that's where it gets fucking important. You know, if you're the exact same weight week after week after week after week, and you think you're bulking and like you think you're eating enough food to bulk, I hate to 
Actually, I, I love to break it to you because then I'm, I'm kind of telling you how to change that. You need to eat more. And if it's from treats, not the majority of your food, I would probably recommend you eat more classic foods for most of your calories, right? Of course, high quality proteins, but don't just eat 800 grams of carbs of Skittles uh, unless you want to destroy your, your pancreas. But, you know, if you need to have a Ben and Jerry's before you go to bed, and that's the only way you can make the scale change, you know, I'm all for it. As long as you're not putting on a crazy amount of body fat, then technically you're not even dirty bulking. I would consider a dirty bulk to be a bulk where you're putting on an insane amount of body fat. You're eating way too much, which apparently is kind of a rare situation. But as long as you're gaining weight steadily and your body fat percentage is not skyrocketing, I don't see a problem having some sweets. Because if your body fat isn't skyrocketing, then that means that you're utilizing the calories you're taking in in a reasonably good way. If when I started bulking up and I was eating my ice cream sandwiches and my you know, cinnamon toast crunch and chocolate milk, if I started packing on body fat, I gotta pump the brakes. I gotta be much more careful about the complexity of the carbs that I'm eating and probably back off on the sugars because you are going to be much more prone to store that as fats because it's so, I mean, relatively fast digesting. As long as you're gaining, you know, a steady, you know, maybe pound, two pounds per week, eat whatever you got to eat to make it happen. I'm not you, so I don't know how to fit these calories into your schedule exactly, but I can say with certainty that you need to do that if you want to make a change weight-wise.